Welcome back to another session. <clears throat> this session is a convolution session and it's going to be low pass filtering a constant. Where we start with the convolution integral as always and our impulse response we are going to have this damped exponential which if you remember from previous work that you can think of as the impulse response of a low pass filter. We're just using 2e to the minus 2t when t is positive or non-negative. And let's now apply to that low pass filter a constant where that constant turns on at t equals 0. And so we now have this amplitude of 4 for non-negative values of time as the input to this low pass filter. If you're visually looking or thinking about what these waveforms look like as a function of time, you can see that it's probably going to be easier to go ahead and flip and slide this input waveform x of t versus flipping and sliding h and that's actually consistent with how we've defined this convolution integral. We're going to go ahead and flip and slide this input x of t. Let's then flip and slide x of t. First let's define it as x of lambda that's just this constant that turns on at lambda equals 0. x of minus lambda, we simply rotate that through the vertical axis lambda equals 0 and obtain x of minus lambda. We can then obtain the waveform that we need in our convolution integral, which is x of t minus lambda, it has a magnitude of 4. It's going to be slid with this parameter t, and t is now going to be at the rightmost edge of that flipped and slid waveform for our input, x of t minus lambda. And I think it's clear that x of, I'm sorry, our impulse response waveform, which is now h of lambda, is this decaying exponential as a function of lambda. It's now 2 e to the minus 2 lambda, and that's h of lambda. Let's now convolve these and we'll do that graphically because that's usually the easiest way to keep track of what's going on. Let's look at the first overlap pattern consistent with what we've been doing most of this time is let's say that that's the overlap pattern when there really is no overlap. Here's our axis for lambda. We have our impulse response, 2e to the minus 2 lambda, and we have our input it has an amplitude of 4. This is x of t minus lambda. This particular interval of support is not overlapping with the interval of support for h of lambda. And because of that, we can see then that this pattern is true when this rightmost edge of our input, which is labeled as t, as long as t remains to the left of lambda equals 0, we obtain an output equal to 0 for maybe I, let me take away that equality and just say that's an inequality for t less than 0.
what's our next overlap pattern? Well, our next overlap pattern, our second overlap pattern, is actually going to be our final overlap pattern because the functional forms do not change once we establish this overlap condition. In this case, here is our x of t minus lambda, which has an amplitude of 4. Here is our decaying exponential, the impulse response, h of lambda, which is 2 e to the minus 2 lambda. And we will be integrating this with respect to lambda when we slide this waveform x, our input waveform, through h. And this overlap pattern is true or occurs as long as t is greater than or equal to 0. As long as t exceeds 0, our output is now this integral from 0 on lambda up to t. That's where both of these interval of supports overlap. Now we can plug in our arguments or the integrand. We have 4 for x of t minus lambda and we have 2 e to the minus 2 lambda d lambda for our impulse response waveform. Now we simply have to integrate this decaying exponential and it's pick your favorite way of integrating. I like to actually get rid of the complicated exponent and that's going to be done by setting v, a new variable of integration, equal to minus 2 lambda. That now allows me to say that dv is minus 2 d lambda and I now need to find a minus 2 d lambda in there and my limits of integration are now I could change those. I could now say well when lambda was equal to 0 that now says that v which is minus 2 lambda is 0 if I now say, well, what's my upper limit of integration going to be for this new variable v? Lambda was actually t. And if I now use this definition of v, I now have v is equal to minus 2t. And that'll be now my limits of integration. Or y of t is going to be this integral from 0 up to minus 2t. This is with v. That's my variable of integration. I have 4 still. I haven't changed that. But now let me put in a 1, which will be minus 1 times a minus 1. I have now e to the minus 2 lambda, but I'm going to call that v. And then I have a minus 2d lambda which is right here, and that's dv. So that I now have minus 4 integral from v equals 0 to minus 2t of e to the v dv. That's now easy for me to integrate. That's just e to the v, and I evaluate that at v equals 0 up to e equal minus 2v so that now I have minus 4 times e to the minus 2t minus e to the 0 or e to the 0 is 1 let me multiply that negative sign through I now have 4 times 1 minus e to the minus 2t and that's what my output y of t is going to be for t greater than or equal to 0, which was the second overlap pattern. And that's now my response 
of a low pass filter due to this constant that turns on at t equals zero and if you wanted to try to sketch this which my sketch may not be the best but here's the independent variable t we start at t equals zero which if we plug that into the exponent we get e to the zero which is one meaning our y is going to start at zero and as t gets larger eventually this particular piece decays down to zero and we approach four and so if this is now a value of four we are going to then have some response which maybe it never gets to four but Hopefully you see that that's now this exponentially growing waveform that within five time constants is effectively at four. And that's now what happens when we low pass filter a more sharply defined constant input of amplitude four. We've now cut out the high frequencies by our low pass filter and we now build up to in time this constant value of four and that's now what happens when we low pass filter a constant and that's what we get through this convolution operation. So this is now our low pass filtered constant. And I'll end this session with that.